I would like to respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we meet on today and wherever you're located also in this webinar and their continuing connection to land, water and community and pay respect to elders past, present and emerging. I would also like to extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who are present, who are in attendance today. Okay, so uh, just some thumbs up that my presentation's moved through the next slide. Just want to make sure that's all working okay. Good, thank you. So uh, first I'll just introduce myself. Uh, my name's Kevin McMurtry. I'm a senior flying operations inspector at CASA, uh, relatively new to CASA, uh, 12 months uh, now, or well, 12 months from 17th of November uh, 2021. Uh, prior to CASA, I was predominantly involved in part 142 flight training and uh, was a head of operations and an examiner of a, of a, of a quite busy 142 operator uh, conducting uh, airline pilot cadet training. Uh, also an examiner uh, with, with instrument rating uh, and uh, instructor rating uh, testing uh, endorsements, flight testing endorsements. Uh, SMS experience, I, I implemented an SMS in my previous employer some time ago and uh, obviously I'm a proponent of SMS. Uh, I, I can share some, some, some very sh short experiences about that with you. Uh, I don't want to take up too much of our time because what I'd like to do throughout this presentation is, um, is make sure we have ample opportunity for questions uh, at the end. Uh, and, and also, uh, I've also got a research and academic background at the University of New South Wales, uh, mainly researching in just culture and reporting behaviours of pilots. And I'm also a safety management systems course facilitator with the postgraduate programs at University of New South Wales. If I could quickly just share some very short experiences of SMS uh, to, my, to my experience. Um, uh, it, it was... Uh, Fair to say that it was it was a, it was a, a critical component of the organisation, especially in a flight training organisation. Uh, as as the organisation developed um, flying output, approximately two thousand to two and a half thousand hours a week, uh, the SMS played a very a substantial role in in managing safety in the organisation. Uh, a couple of couple of examples. Uh, after the emergency response plan, which is an element of an SMS, was critical in managing the the crisis of a accident. Fortunately, not a uh, a, uh, a fatal accident, but a very serious accident with two uh, two uh, instructor and student uh, injured quite uh, substantially. Uh, and also in in monitoring trends, uh, the, the the fleet was quite a new fleet of aircraft and uh, luckily with instructors and, and students reporting some engine anomalies, uh, it allowed our, uh, the, through the set safety management system, the, the, uh, the engineering department to, to, to become alerted that there was potentially an issue with, uh, with uh, cylinder heads in, in these particular aircraft type or models. And uh, when they investigated that further, uh, they found a cylinder head crack in between the uh, inlet and outlet valves. And then they uh, monitored that and then uh, the, the, the problem continued. And, and uh, then they did a complete bore scope inspection across the whole fleet. And, and the, then the problem was, was uh, evident across uh, all six of those aircraft. Uh, Without the SMS, we may not have. They, the company may not have detected that so early. So it, it, it was a. It was something that was was crucial in managing safety in the organisation. So the topic today's discussion we'll look at shortly. How this session will run. Uh, I'm going to be presenting and lecturing. Uh, what I'd like you to do is save any questions to the end. Make take a note of them. You're quite welcome to put them in the chat. Uh, so we've got a record of those also. 
and then uh, we'll attend to the questions at the end of the session. So I will be lecturing essentially um, throughout. Uh, we just want to say we can continue and provide more opportunity for questions towards the end. Uh, that, that, that's the aim. So what we're looking at uh, this afternoon, what is an SMS? Uh, why you need an SMS? <coughs> Pardon me. It's SMS rules that are that are applicable to different types of operations. Uh, what is an SMS implementation plan? Uh, SMS implementation planning will go through a five step process. Submitting your SMS implementation plan to CASA uh, later this year, and then what happens next? <clears throat> so, uh, and the nature of this webinar isn't to talk about SMS in general. I'm just going to give you a very, very short overview to three different perspectives. Uh, so to a practical perspective, an SMS, uh, it's, it's a system that involves everyone in the organisation, people, uh, resources, uh, the, the management, the safety critical personnel, uh, pilots, engineers, uh, to, to actively seek out uh, safety issues that may may arise in the operations, uh, existing and new emerging safety risks, uh, and then, and then to develop the corrective actions to reduce risks that that, that those uh, issues may present, and then monitor the corrective actions that that uh, you're putting in place to ensure that those risks are appropriately controlled. You'll notice that I've got practical and cultural perspective. It, it's an SMS, uh, is it just a, a policy system? It is essentially a cultural system. It depends on the organisation uh, developing a culture uh, of a willingness to share uh, information, share bad news with the management of the company so that that information can be uh, uh, can be analysed uh, to, to, to determine the level of risk that it may present to organisations. To a policy and organisational perspective, uh, an SMS is a, it's a system like other business systems, quality management systems, financial management systems. It's a systematic and organised approach to managing safety. Uh, it's not a a compliance-based system, it is a performance, it's an outcome-based system that you have control how you want to manage the hazards and risk in your organisation, not by rules, but by, by procedures and policies that you, you develop for your organisation based on the, the size, the nature and the complexity of your operation. Uh, Importantly, it identifies the safety accountabilities and responsibilities of key personnel and, and, and uh, key safety uh, managers in the organisation, which we'll look at. We'll talk a, bit, a little bit about key personnel shortly, uh, and it documents these policies and procedures in your SMS manual to manage safety. To a processes and procedures perspective, uh, SMS uh, it, it it facilitates the identification of, of hazards, and then allows you to. Uh, determine the level of risk that could affect your organisation. Then you can assess and prioritise those, those hazards and risks to, to determine whether you can accept those risks or you can reduce the exposure to the risk by, by putting in certain uh, controls and measures to, to reduce those risks sufficiently for your particular operation. And you'll, you'll notice on I'm placing an emphasis on particular operations because each operation, each organisation has got different uh, hazards and risks that are that uh, that they're ex you're exposed to in the operating environment of that of that organisation, and that's an important thing when you start developing your SMS. Is you think about not the SMS just being a generic system, but unique to your organisation which we'll talk a little bit about shortly. So why do you need an SMS? Uh, uh, the overarching reason, well, there's two, well, the overarching reason is, is safety management. However, there are regulatory requirements also, and also CASA has uh, requirements as a ICAO uh, 
uh, member state that we CASA has an obligation that all of its service providers, aviation operators, whether they're maintenance organisations or um, uh, flight training organisations, air transport, air work operators, operators uh, have to uh, implement the safety management system. That is an I, uh, overarching ICAO requirement. To an, to an operator's perspective, why do we need SMS? Um, well, to maintain and improve aviation safety uh, to an acceptable level. Uh, what is an acceptable level? Uh, well, ICAO does define it in, 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 in the uh, Acceptable level is, is we've got to acknowledge that we're not reducing risk to zero, and that is one of the the um, fundamental things about an SMS is it acknowledges that we can't reduce risk to zero, um, but manage risk to to levels that are acceptable to the operation that 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 you may be involved in, whether it's uh, aero work or air transport or or maintenance or an airport operator. Uh, also, managing safety or managing compliance within what's expected of, of legislation. And also, we often think of our SMS as just managing aviation risks and, and, and serious incidents and accidents, uh, but it also can assist in, in our compliance with workplace and healthy legislation and also in 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 in, uh, in in cases or situations where there may be other types of uh, litigation like uh, negligence or so forth, professional negligence uh, claims things like that an SMS uh, where a systematic approach to magic safety can assist in, in reducing exposure to those sorts of uh, types of things happening to the organization also. Uh, and practically speaking, to protect against uh, direct costs, direct cost are the the upfront costs of uh, that we can physically see of aircraft damage that could be involved in a serious incident or an accident, damage to property, uh, uh, attendance of personnel, not not uh, because the, uh, of uh, different injuries and so forth. They're the direct costs. Um, generally reasonably easy to calculate after an event. Uh, the indirect costs can be more challenging to, to calculate and also uh, can be quite sub uh, substantially higher than the, than the direct cost and the indirect cost can, can accumulate over time. So it's an, another important thing that, a, that a, a mature SMS can protect against these things in reducing exposure to, to uh, hazards and, and Incidents that can result in incidents or accidents. And the third uh, type of uh, thing that they, to protect against is, is the costs that are associated with serious incidents or accidents to the industry as a whole. Um, an accident, an aircraft accident, is a high profile event. It it's, uh, generally makes national news, even if it's a light aircraft. Uh, that has an impact on industry and also social costs um, and also in, in terms of the organisation and the personnel and their well-being. And I can say this from experience of being involved, uh, not myself personally, but the organisation in a, in a, a serious accident, uh, that, that uh, the, the impact on, on, on personnel is quite substantial. In, in the trauma after it, it takes a long time. Uh, that that's uh, all, to all aspects of, of the organisation. That, that, that it plays, uh, it weighs heavily on, on, on people in the organisation. An SMS can protect against these things uh, as it matures. This slide is just to demonstrate uh, holistically, is that generally we 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 react. Uh, we act reactively to an accident. It's something very obvious, um, or something that that, that uh, and then we 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 react to that and put uh, processes and procedures in place to ensure that it doesn't happen again. It's things that are happening that we don't know. Things underneath the surface, or things, uh, if we operate uh, different remote bases, there may be things that we're not aware of, where an SMS. Uh, 
when the organization develops and its SMS matures um, and the the reporting culture is is is, is positive and robust and developed, um, it, it facilitates the organization to build safety intelligence, which you can analyze and also monitor to detect trends. Um, I can say from experience that that uh, that it's it's not uncommon for some incidents to go unreported, uh, and then you find out about this uh, second or third hand through another operator or through air traffic control. Uh, not so much about people being fearful reporting, but they just may forget, or if if the SMS is quite. Uh, immature in its development, it, it, it's not uncommon that, that, that as an operator, you, you may not know about certain things that are happening in your in your in your operations, which is that that's not conducive to to your enduring safety management. So an SMS allows us to to develop the high levels of safety intelligence. It's a it's a one positive aspect of it. The SMS rules that uh, are applicable to uh, or to air transport and area work operators. Uh, subpart 119.F is, is applicable to air transport operators of larger aircraft and smaller aircrafts under 135 and rotorcraft under 133. They, that, that's the subpart that uh, uh, operators who, fall, who operate under those types of parts, 121, 133, and 1 need to become familiar with. Airwork operators uh, subpart 138.b.6, and that is uh, not applicable to all area work operations, but relevant part 138 operations under 138.140, uh, which I'll just run through those quickly. Um, uh, area work operators that transport marine pilots, operations in multi engine aeroplanes, I'm oh, sorry, multi engine rotorcraft uh, exceeding. 3,175 kilograms, uh, multi-engine aeroplanes exceeding uh, 5,700 kilograms, and turbine engine aeroplanes other than turboprop aircraft. Uh, that those types of oper airwork operations uh, must implement a, a SMS under 138.b.6. Uh, and then CASA exemption 8721, which deals with the deferred transition parts two and four, which are applicable to air transport and air work, the relevant air work operators. The key dates to recall, to remember, 2nd of December 2022 is the submission that on or before uh, to December to submit your SMS implementation plan. And then on or before the 3rd of June 2024 to submit your SMS manual content to CASA. So what is an SMS implementation plan? Uh, it's a number of things. Uh, it, it assists a methodically uh, conducted SMS implementation plan, assists in the preparation of your SMS De developing your SMS in accordance with the SMS regulations, uh, either 119.f or 138.b.6. Um, it, it assists you in developing uh, and ensuring that your, your SMS manual content complies with those reg regulatory requirements. Uh, there, are, there, there are four components and 12 elements to SMS, which we'll look at briefly shortly. Uh, by doing an, a, 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 an implementation plan, importantly, a gap analysis, it just provides you greater level of assurance that you're going to, you're going to be compliant with those regulations. The gap analysis, um, it, it, it's, it's, the, it, it's a checklist item that, that, that you work through uh, and CASA has developed uh, a, a gap analysis tool, which we'll talk about shortly, to assist you. Uh, to to identify existing safety management practices that you may already have in your organisation uh, against the ones required by the regulations. For example, 
you may have existing systems in place which aren't formalized in a, in a manual anywhere. They could be just be the things that how you do business. They could be informal reporting. That could be just verbal reporting by pilots and engineers to the to the CEO or the the, the head of operations or the chief engineer. Um, uh, uh, and that's that's just an informal system, and then 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 you, the organisation manages that information uh, that may not be documented anywhere. So uh, that's just an informal uh, reporting system. It, it exists. You do you you do have a component that that it resembles something that's required in an SMS, but it hasn't been documented yet, and and a gap analysis will allow you to identify that. Uh, the gap analysis or the, the implementation plan will also allow you to start thinking about the type, the personnel that you can uh, get involved in the development of your SMS, the resources that you require, and the tasks, what type of tasks and activities will be required for the implementation planning and development of your SMS. Uh, determine the requirements for safety personnel. Uh, the, the the CEO, which all certificate holders, air work or air transport AOC holders, require a CEO. In safety management talk uh, and under the regulations, the CEO is known as the accountable manager, uh, and that's why I've, I've got accountable manager in brackets. And, and it's important to understand that this pre-implementation phase that the accountable manager should be involved in the development of the SMS and assisting in the development of the SMS right from the beginning because the, the, the accountable manager is the person in the organisation who is completely accountable and expressly accountable for safety of the organisation under the regulations. Uh, and so that, that's so the, the, the early involvement of the accountable manager in SMS development is crucial to its success. Um, we'll talk about other safety personnel like the safety manager shortly. And then the, the last step of your implementation plan is to create a timeline for each implementation planning process and task. Uh, now, it's important to think when you're developing, even when you're doing, working for your SMS implementation plan, to start thinking about specifically your operation in, in the size of your operation, the complexity of your operation and the nature of the type of operation that you have and how that is affects safety, the types of risks and developing your SMS, i.e. your four SMS components required by the regulations and their 12 SMS elements unique to your, to your operation. Uh, that that's a very important thing to consider. That you, you, you're you're thinking about how this works specifically for your organisation. AC one one nine zero zero one has uh, some information in it. Uh, in Appendix B, there is an SMS implementation planning tool and gap analysis, which includes gap analysis and implementation planning section. It's a work through checklist which allows you to systematically um, uh, do a gap analysis and, and then develop progressively in, uh, work on your implementation plan uh, for your SMS. Uh, Appendix C provides the um, just the instruction to the submission of the S of that. Uh, there are some other resources about implementation planning we'll talk about shortly also that can assist. So now we'll talk, now we'll get into the, the five steps of, of basically developing a SMS implementation plan, uh, what, what you need to do in order to do that. So step one is to review the regulatory requirements applicable to your operation. Air transport operations, whether it's one, two, one, large aircraft, 133 rotorcraft air transport or 135 smaller aeroplane air transport transport all fall under the SMS requirements of CASA 119.F. 
Aerial work operations, um, if, if, if you're a relevant air work operator, operator that, that has re, is required to submit an SMS, uh, the SMS uh, requirements are under South Part 138.bravo.6. <clears throat> if you're operating um, under both 138 and one, uh, air transport, uh, you essentially operate under the 119.f SMS rules. And in fact, the, both regulations, uh, the SMS components and elements are identical with the exception of one for air transport, which we'll look at shortly. You've probably heard, me, well, you would have heard me mentioning the four components and 12 elements uh, quite a bit or so far during this webinar. I'll just expand on those quickly for you now. Uh, the four components, so these are components are components that uh, aligns with the ICAO SMS requirements. And then CASA has now uh, those ICAO SMS requirements, the four components and 12 elements are reflected in CASA 119.190 and 138.145. Uh, they, they are both identical to each other. I'm not going to discuss each element. I'm just, just this is just an overview of the SMS regulatory requirements. Um, and it's also important to understand that all operators, irrespective of size, complexity, and the nature of the operation, must uh, the SMS must contain each and every one of these four components and 12 elements of SMS. It, it, it can't be customised to exclude any of these components. That the, the, the foundation of the SMS, irrespective of the size of the organisation, its complexity uh, must contain each component and element. And elements. There's an additional requirement for certain air transport operators uh, under 119.195. If, if the operator has uh, conducts operations in aircraft which uh, have a max takeoff weight in excess of 27,000 kilograms or a rotorcraft in excess of 7,000 kilograms or, or with a seating configuration of more than nine seats, there also is an additional requirement of a flight data analysis program must be implemented. Step two is the gap analysis. We'll do a, a short walkthrough shortly. Uh, as I mentioned before, the gap analysis allows you to work through the checklist and identify by reading the particular questions, which I'll, I'll, I'll bring up on the next, next slide, um, features of an SMS and to check if you have that particular uh, that process existing in your organisation, or you may not, uh, and, and then document that to, to, to uh, determine what you need to do to implement that, um, how they can be formally integrated into your organisation. It's important to understand that the, the gap analysis and following a defined gap analysis tool and checklist like we, we've developed in, in AC 119-01, and also the, uh, the safety management system guidance uh, booklets that CASA has developed. Uh, it, 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 it provides you an assurance that you're, you're, you, you'll establish a solid foundation for your SMS. So this slide is just demonstrating or outlining uh, the the gap analysis tool, the, safety, the implementation and gap analysis tool in AC 119-01. And I'll just quickly go through the features and, and an explanation. Uh, the, 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 the source regulation is included. And then the next component is an implementation question. This is the checklist component of the, of the gap analysis implementation planning tool where you systematically walk through each implementation question, ask yourself the question to see if you identify, do we already do something like this in my organisation? Do we have a reporting system? Do we promote positive reporting? Do we have safety meetings? Uh, and yes, no 
uh, answers to those uh, to those questions. Uh, if it's a yes, you more than likely you'll have to formally um, that, that has to be formally uh, documented and then implemented in in your SMS manual. If the answer is no, uh, that that then then you have to develop a particular process itself. You've also noticed that in this tool, we have reference to sections of AC11901, which are relevant to the particular implementation question. Uh, you'll also notice in, in, the, uh, in each section, the implementation question that we have on this tool actually resembles or translates into a performance marker for the regulation that the question in the implementation planning tool is identical to the, the section um, that you're currently performing your gap analysis on. Uh, so it's important to follow that because the, 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 when you refer to, to AC 109-01, each performance marker um, also has associated guidance material and extra context about how to comply with that particular requirement in your SMS manual. Uh, and also, we do have reference to the, the applicable SMS for Aviation a Practical Guide um, work uh, booklets, which have, uh, are now that the third edition has just been released, um, and that provides even more context uh, in developing your plain English guidance in how to develop your SMS material content. So, if you systematically work through each implementation question, uh, it, it provides you more of an assurance to that, that your SMS, when you develop your SMS content, uh, conformity with the regulations for SMS. Um, it assists in more efficient evaluation of the SMS uh, when CASA does, does review your SMS. Uh, I'm not talking about efficiency for CASA, I'm talking about efficiency in respect to your organisation in, in when in the post evaluation feedback is that there uh, hopefully will be less areas that need to be addressed if, if you systematically work through each implementation question. Uh, and of course, it, it, it will allow you to develop a more effective SMS framework for your organisation. Just quickly and shortly, I won't talk about this for, for a long time, but it, it's, it's not... Um, it's not uncommon that all of your, your an SMS is, is a system that takes time to, to mature. Uh, for example, uh, you can't just switch an SMS on. You can develop your SMS manual content, which has to be compliant with the SMS regulations, the four components and 12 elements. However, some of those elements may not be operative until some time down the track with, with, say, six to 12 months operating experience uh, after your SMS has been fully implemented. Uh, for example, reporting. I mean, you, you must uh, implement a reporting system. However, it's, it, you're not, that the performance of that reporting system isn't going to be visible or evidence until some time after implementation. So, uh, for example, if we have a look at this second highlighted item here, which says, does the safety policy actively encourage safe reporting. The policy could be present and suitable that it would actively encourage people to report, but it's not going to be apparent how effective that is until, let's say, six to 12 months after implementation. So it, it's uh, that's just an example of some elements uh, aren't operative immediately on implementation. As I said before, uh, you may already have some systems in place that, that resemble safety management in your organisation. For example, if we look at this particular implementation question here, which deals with management commitment to safety, uh, and the question asked, does the Campbell manager and senior management 
promote a positive safety culture, just culture, and visibly demonstrate the commitment to safety policy through active participation. When you sit down and, and, and ask yourself that question, you might say, yeah, we do that. We do that practically. People will share their experiences with us in this organisation. We meet at training meetings or, or pilots meetings. We talk about safety issues. So we do that, but it may not be formally documented anywhere. So essentially, you've got an informal system in place uh, that, that exists, but it now needs to be implemented in, in procedures and policy. Uh, so you could note that down as an informal system. Likewise, does the safety policy actively encourage reporting? You might say, yep, we have a lot of reports. They, that they're all visible, uh, verbal reports, but it's not a formal reporting system. It's informal. Uh, so you've identified you've got a, a system in place which is uh, it, it's, it needs to develop to be implemented fully, to be formalised. You may not have a formal just culture policy. You may be just in your actions in, in reporting in your organisation, but you may not have it formalised in a policy so everyone has access to that. It might be just a cultural understanding that, that you do have just culture. Uh, so you can say, okay, we, do, we don't have that particular um, policy existing. Uh, do you have safety objectives uh, that are formalised? You, you, you probably you may not have those documented formalised and so forth. Uh, they're, they're, so they're, they don't exist at present. So after you've done your gap analysis, then we start looking at the implementation planning part of the, uh, of the process, um, which is to identify the, the resources that you may need, the task and the responsibilities of the people who are going to develop these these uh, components and elements. Um, the, the, it, so this this is where you start thinking about the people that you'll be utilising and involving, and I, I and I can't over emphasise enough the importance of the of the accountable manager involvement right from the beginning. The resources that are needed, the resources that you already have, resources that you may need. You may need. Um, some some guidance on how to write policy. You may need some, some electronic resources, and then the tasks and processes required. Uh, the implementation planning starts by uh, a description of your system. And look, this is just a form that we're using that, that's available for you through AC one one nine zero one. You can develop your own um, implementation planning tools. This is not when uh, Kaz is not suggesting you have to use this. But it's just, to, it's just to give you some guidance. Uh, so you need to start thinking about writing about your organisation, description of your type of operations, multiple bases, uh, customers and so forth, uh, existing systems in place that, that you do utilise to manage safety. Uh, identify internal and external interfaces and how they affect or how they can influence safety in your organisation. An internal inter interface could be a the maintenance organisation in your company. It could be the flight dispatch section of your company. It could be the accounting department. Uh, thinking about how do those inter how do those internal units affect safety in our organisation? And external interfaces uh, could be spare part suppliers, refuelers, the airport operator, thinking about how do those external interfaces or external entities influence safety in, in my organisation. Uh, and then documenting hazards and risks, sitting down and thinking, okay, what are the five, the three to five uh, uh, top hazards and risks in, in my operations? It could be, uh, it could be a low level operator doing survey, so it's low level flying. Um, it could be, um, it, it, it's just whatever's relevant to it. It could be over water operations uh, and, and think remote, remote uh, base operations, identifying those, just so you can start thinking about these things. Uh, so once you've completed your gap analysis, we start looking at how we put this into the implementation plan. We write down, we enter in the implementation plan the, the, 
the key people who are going to be involved in this this process. As I said before, the accountable manager, important to be involved right from the outset, onset, because that person is accountable expressly for safety management of the organisation. Uh, other people, a, a person who you may be nominating as a safety manager, getting that person involved in the development of the SMS. And then documenting the resources. We're not going to go for each one of those at the moment. You'll get access to this, of course. Uh, this is just an example anyway. Um, the, the resources required. And then what you've got to do for, for implementation of that particular component, um, develop policy, uh, commit, in this case, it's developing a, a safety policy. So just to give you a bit of a, a guide on to assist in in developing to to help you thinking about each of these tasks, uh, think about if the task requires a philosophy. Um, for example, that could be a safety policy. Does the task that you're looking at require a process? For example, that could be a safety reporting system, or is it a practice? Is is what when you're reading the implementation question, is it a, a philosophy, for example, policy, a process, or a practice, an auditing program, continuous improvement? Um, that 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 can help you differentiate the different implementation planning tasks throughout your development of your SMS. Step four is to determine safety personnel. The CEO, uh, the accountable manager, as I mentioned before, critically important to be involved from the beginning. Um, the safety manager, it's, it's important to start thinking about the safety manager now. Uh, the, the regulations do require the appointment of a safety manager. Uh, the safety manager, and again, this depends upon the, the size, nature and complexity of the operation. Um, as it looks at the safety manager in that aspect, uh, whether that person will be interviewed or, or assessed. And also the safety manager can be an employee who could an existing employee in another role. Uh, they could allocate a certain amount of time of their responsibilities to safety management. Uh, that could be a part-time employee or that could be a contracted person. However, uh, it, it will be will be putting some more guidance out on the safety manager requirements uh, in the coming months. Uh, that's not the nature, but, just we're, but it's important to start thinking about this now. What also is also important, and I'd like to emphasise, is the safety manager um, and the CEO need to be a different person. The safety manager has to be independent of the CEO, and it's only under unforeseen circumstances for a short period of time, seven days, that the CEO and safety manager could be the same person. Uh, the regulations do permit the head of flight operations and the safety manager to be the same person, again, on a case-by-case -case basis, but the regulations do permit that. So step five is to create your timeline. This is just an example of a, 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 a three-phase timeline. Uh, you might elect to use four, phases in, in your implementation planning. Uh, it doesn't matter, just as long as it's 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 useful for you um, and you've outlined each four components and and the associated 12 elements over a period of time and how and when you're going to implement those. It doesn't have to be a linear process. They can be staggered. Uh, it's, it's just dependent upon how your organisation wants to do this. Again, key dates, the 2nd of December 22 for submission of your SMS implementation plan and then 3rd of June 2024 for your SMS content. And this slide here just, just shows in, in the implementation planning page that you've identified which phase that your uh, safety policy is being implemented and at a, at a date for that uh, to be completed. Submitting your SMS uh, implementation plan to CASA. Uh, instructions are in Appendix C of AC 109-01 and also uh, they are soon to be, not at, right at the moment, a, on the CASA SMS webpage. 
uh, we'll be shortly putting up an extra tile with instructions how to submit your SMS implementation plan. Uh, you will receive in the, in, the, in the coming weeks an email which will have a unique reference number for your organisation for your SMS implementation plan submission. It's important that you use that so uh, that, the, that we can identify your SMS implementation plan to your organisation so we can start reviewing that. So what's next? Uh, once your SMS implementation plan has been submitted, you'll get an acknowledgement from CASA. It'll be reviewed by uh, CASA uh, inspectors, uh, and then you receive feedback from that review. And then during 2023, 2024, uh, CASA will be uh, rolling out more webinars similar to this in, S in, in, in assisting in development of your SMS content. Uh, the guidance resources, uh, oh, incidentally, you will receive a email at the uh, sometime after this presentation and we'll have links to all of these resources. And also um, they will include references to particular sections to assist you in things that we've discussed today. Uh, so I'm not going to lay because I'm running out of time. I've taken a bit longer than I thought. Um, but you will receive information uh, on these documents and links to them, which will assist you. And uh, the SMS uh, resource kit, uh, SMS 1, 7 and 8 are particularly relevant for your SMS implementation in, in, in scalability and also gap analysis and implementation planning. And also uh, the, the, the remaining books, 2, 3, 4 and 5, um, provide you plain English guidance on developing your four elements of four components and 12 elements for SMS in plain English. Very useful. Uh, the CASA SMS website and one final document again, which you'll get a, uh, a link to, is a, a manual, a document provided by the Safety Management Inter International Collaboration Group, which again is a, a plain English guide for understanding how to, what an SMS is and how to develop an SMS into your organisation and explaining things like safety performance indicators uh, and, and also and examples of those sorts of things. You will also have a link to that document. Um, I won't, we've covered everything we need to cover today. I'd like to sort of re use the remaining time for questions and answers uh, as I've sort of gone over a little bit what I would have liked to do. So. Um, thanks for your all patience in listening to me, and uh, I'm looking forward to any questions. Uh, incidentally, if there's anything I can't answer at this point in time, I will take it on notice, and then I will get back to you. That's what we've been doing in the previous webinar, because uh, I may not be able to have the question at, on hand at the moment, the answer. I'd like prefer to, to research that for you, but I'm, I'm ready for any questions. No questions, Kevin? Run through the chat? No, can't see. If anybody would like to ask a question, please put your microphone on or, or type it into the chat box. Okay, Matt, uh, will there be a sample SMS produced by CASA before the 2nd December deadline? Thanks. Thanks for the question, Matt. Uh, at this point in time, there hasn't been a final decision made on that, Matt. Uh, the the it's a, it it's a, it is an active discussion within CASA, uh, but the only answer I can give you, a definite answer, it, it, at the moment, at this point in time, uh, the it, it's uh, it, well, it's just an active discussion. We haven't sort of finalised a decision on that as yet. Um, what I encourage you to do is uh, is just continue. So uh, how that would be communicated would be, if that does eventuate, would be through what do I do next? And that's what I encourage you to, to um, because that, that's how we would uh, communicate that information. 
And for those on the line, what can I do next is a monthly newsletter. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, please jump onto the CASA website. And I think we've got Craig who's also typing away in, um, to ask you a question soon. Just while Craig's typing, I just also what I'd like to um, just also some other provide some, I guess, as I said, positive uh, information about SMS is the uh, is that uh, Transport Canada was an early adopter of SMS, and uh, they did a post SMS implementation planning uh, uh, review in two thousand and nineteen, and and the results that came back um, was that. The majority of operators stated that if um, the regulation, what well, now that they operate with an SMS, if the regulations didn't require them to continue using their SMS, that their experience has been that positive with their organisation with their SMS that they will continue to operate using SMS. Uh, that that's something that I think so is a really quite a positive uh, story, uh, and also that the operators uh, revealed that. They, their SMS has allowed them to detect trends in their operations, hazardous trends that they wouldn't have otherwise known about. Granted, that that sort of level of maturity takes time. Okay, uh, Craig, will this apply to those flight schools operating under self self administering organisations? Craig, I'll have to get back to you on that question. I would rather. I don't really have an answer to that. I'm, what I'm going to do is, uh, well, I've got your question there, and I'll, I'll, there, we do have a person in the safety system section in CASA who's a specialist in that area, and I'm going to consult with him on that because um, it, yeah, uh, my knowledge in self-administering organisations is, is very minimal. So sorry, I can't, but we uh, we will get your contact details and that I'll respond to you in uh, by email on that particular question. Kevin, would you like me to comment on that one now? Uh, Actually, that'd be terrific if you could, because you're the expert on things to talk about. <laughs> Thank you, um, and and sorry to uh, to jump in here. Um, Ashley McAlpine from uh, Safety Systems within CASA, and and Craig, fantastic question. Um, uh, essentially, the, the the 149 SMS requirements mimic the 119 and associated safety management system requirements um, to the extent that if all of the requirements you have for 149 would achieve what is required out of the 119 stuff. So you're not required, um, if you're a school, for instance, that had uh, had both, um, or, or sorry, the other flight school um, reg side of things, you're not required to have a duplicate system. Um, the one compliant four component 12 element SMS um, would actually suffice for both. Hopefully that answers it. Thank you, Ashley. Thanks for that. Uh, Daniel has his hand up. Thanks. Thank you, Daniel. Would you like to ask him? Yeah, sorry, I seem to not have the chat function on my teams. Um, just got a question with content of the SMS. Um, looking at the part about third parties and incorporating them in your SMS, just wondering how CASA sort of see how we can sort of facilitate that. We operate uh, sort of under all over domestically over Australia and worldwide. So trying to incorporate every third party interface into our SMS is impossible. So I'm just wondering what CASA's view on that is. Thanks, Daniel. That's, um, that, that's a really good question. Uh, it's not so much you need to document expressly your third party interfaces or external interfaces in it's it, it's more to do that you've considered them uh that, that, that those organizations are aware of your sms how your sms works the report the the, the, the expect essentially uh, and it's up to your organization to train them so what you will need to 
to document in your SMS, though, is is that in considering of the third party interfaces that you do have, that you'll be provided training for those those organisations on on your SMS, uh, how they report, uh, and, and so forth. That that's that that's a sort of detail and information that's required in your SMS content. Uh, if you chose, you could elect to it identify each of those organisations, but you'll probably need to change the, you know, it, as organisations, you may change from time to time. That means you have to regularly update your SMS manual. But uh, it's the, 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 the policy would be uh, that you have considered uh, the, the, the types and you could list the types of, of external interfaces uh, and then how you will train them in, 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 in them understanding of their responsibilities in your safety management system. Does that answer the question? Uh, sort of. I just find it a bit impractical, like we could be in Fiji and then saying the refueler needs to be trained in our SMS. And then, you yes, said, if you're going to multiple destinations, you've got ground handlers and all that. So it just seems impractical to find a training solution for people you might use once every two years. There's many different ways to to uh, and that's that's one of the real benefits of outcome based legislation. I, I do understand completely what you're saying of the impracticality of that. But look, it could be again. It, it, one thing I will say: an SMS, it's it's it it's going to place a requirement on resources in your organisation. There's there's no disregarding that. That that's something. There's a, there's continuing training requirements. Uh, and in this instance, what you're talking about, I'll just give an example how I would would uh, approach that. Um, I would develop some online training um, that that, that uh, for, for in a situation like that, as opposed to having to do face to face training uh, and some form of. Uh, it doesn't have to be an assessment, but but some sort of of questionnaire that you that you're uh, certain. That 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 the that that uh, refueling organisation uh, uh, understands what they need to do. Uh, that that's that that would be how you could could practically meet uh, what you what you have identified could be a very impractical thing. Is that uh, once you've developed that resource, it doesn't cost a lot to administer that. Um, but it, it, yeah, look, SMS does include. It does introduce additional burdens. There's no doubt on that. There's no disregarding that. That's something that that uh, it's it has wants to be transparent about. That there, but that but the emphasis on that is it's it's continuing. It's 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 heightening safety to to a a, a higher level than what. Um, well, it's enhancing safety, uh, but does there is there is additional burdens to that? There's no doubt in that. No, thank you for that. Thank you. That's a, it's a really, it's a good practical question. Thanks for that. Kevin, you have one last question from Matt. Do you have oh. any suggestions for digital reporting systems for archiving and analysing reported data? Thanks, Matt. I don't have a lot of experience in digital reporting systems. However, I'm aware that there are a number out there. Um, uh, the, 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 there's, well, I'm not sure if I can endorse um, uh, the particular manufacturers and so forth. But look, there are. Um, I'm happy to maybe get some guidance on that, and and I could. I think I'll email you back because there. Look, there are some. I guess we call off the shelf systems um, that, of various different costs. That, that, that a lot of air operators around Australia already use, and they do have SMS components and reporting systems in them. I think I might just, uh, based on my being fairly new at CASA, I'm just not quite sure, you know, what I can do in, in, in terms of uh, acknowledging and endorsing particular commercial platforms. So I will get back to you on that um, after I've sort of consulted, uh, and then I'm, I'm happy to share with you what those would be, if you don't mind, if that's if that's okay with you. 
but there are to answer your question there are there are platforms available and some, and a number of uh, quite complex and also non complex operators use these platforms for their for their reporting systems and their and their hazard uh, risk analysis There's no more questions. Thank you, Kevin. OK, well, thank you, everyone. I, I appreciate your time. Um, it, it, it's uh, been a pleasure uh, presenting to you, and I, I hope that this has been helpful for you. And, and uh, uh, don't, don't be afraid to reach out to CASA if you need some. We're, we're here to do as much as you can to assist uh, industry through their SMS implementation.